Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And it's been a while since we last took a glance at Fallout 4 over on this channel. But after spending a few days straight playing through the game again, I figured it was high time we jump back into it for another video. Yes, the wild wasteland that is the post-apocalyptic commonwealth is a land littered with an almost endless number of quests to complete, survivors to meet, and mutants to defeat. Indeed, Fallout 4 has an almost infinite number of activities to keep you busy. And going on three years after its initial release, there may still be a few more things to do, alternative paths to take, and actions to embark on that much of the community hasn't explored. So today we'll be diving in to five more things you probably didn't know you could do in Fallout 4. Starting off, during the Brotherhood of Steel quest, Liberty Reprimed, in which the faction sends the player on a mission to find materials and recruit individuals to help reconstruct the Great Automaton, Liberty Prime, you'll eventually find yourself at Sentinel Site Prescott, an old pre-war US bomb storage facility now located in the Glowing Sea. The Elders want you to secure the location for the Brotherhood, so that they could use its supply of MK-28 nukes as ammunition for Liberty Prime. This part of the mission functions like a typical dungeon crawl, as a sole survivor fights their way through the structure, clearing out onslaughts of feral ghouls and pre-war traps and turrets throughout your journey. Eventually you'll reach the control room and find Sentinel Site Prescott's mainframe terminal, which you'll need to activate to fully disable the area's defensive systems and allow the BOS to take control. Trouble is, it'll be guarded by a fellow named Brother Henry, a zealous child of Adam, as well as his assaultron, Adam's Wrath, who apparently got here first. Henry will inform you that this area is now property of the children of Adam, and no one else, demanding that you leave. You'll have to either pass a speech check, or just murder him and his robot to death in order to finish this part of the quest. However, if you've installed the Far Harbor DLC, and decided to cast your lot in with the Children of Adam and join that faction in the expansion, a new dialogue option with Henry will become available, wherein you can tell him that you're a follower of Adam as well, and he'll let you pass, not wanting to disturb your pilgrimage or whatever. State your purpose, stranger. You walk on Adam's hallowed ground. It's alright, brother. I am a child of Adam, too. I'm part of a church up north, the Nucleus, near a town called Far Harbor. Far Harbor. You've seen Adam's holy veil. But you have traveled so far, I apologize. I will not keep you from finishing your pilgrimage. Take this, and prepare to enter his inner sanctum. I found this interaction to be really neat, as the Far Harbor DLC came out long after the vanilla game, obviously. So it was kind of cool that Bethesda either brought back old voice actors, or thought ahead of time and had the voice actors say these lines in preparation for the release. Anything for immersion. Next on the list, before we completely leave Far Harbor, Erickson is a friendly super mutant we can meet on the island. He lives out of the wreckage of an old crashed pre-war plane and notably has taken a liking to the practice of raising dogs, which he'll offer to sell to the sole survivor as companions. Alongside Strong, he's one of only two super mutants in the entire game that won't try to rip your head off on sight. It's unclear what exactly it is that makes Ericsson non-hostile, though most suspect it's either the fog or the Vim soft drink. Regardless, if the player has dog meat as an active follower during your first meeting with Ericsson, a unique little interaction will be triggered, wherein the gentle giant not only offers some special dialogue, questioning you about your canine, but even gives you a gift to use on dog meat in the form of a blue bandana. <sighs> That's a nice looking dog you got there. Where'd you find him? To be honest, he kind of found me. Uh, yep. Certainly had a few follow me home before. Here, something for your pup. Did you need something? I was just passing through. Fine. Other than Dogmeat, the only other companion Erickson will have an interaction with is Old Longfellow. But he won't give you any cool toys when you're in his company. Coming at number three, speaking of companions, Deacon is the lovable human field agent working for the railroad. He's known for a tendency to pathologically lie, as well as an innate fondness for all things secrecy and disguise related. 
Well, if the player has Deacon as an active follower while in the Diamond City markets, there's an ever so small chance he may strike up a very interesting conversation with Arturo, the settlement's most prominent arms dealer. Geiger counter, bud? Mine's in the shop. You the guy about the article? The one and only. I'd be careful around here. The target keeps late hours with strange visitors. That's not proof. Hey, not even Piper's dug up anything more yet. Got it. Keep your head down and no heroics. This seems to suggest that Arturo is a member of, an informant for, or at very least associated with the railroad in some capacity. It's unclear what exactly the subject of his and Deacon's discussion is, but it's obvious they're quite familiar with each other. Admittedly, this spot is less about something you can do, and more about what other NPCs might do when you put them together. So we're gonna move on. For fourth spot, for Turtle Post 115, on the northwestern edge of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology's old campus, was a pre-war ballroom and office space, seemingly used for affairs related to the US military, specifically ceremonies and celebrations. Its current occupants, however, are a gang of very unfriendly and very hungry super mutants, whom you'll have to overpower if you wish to explore these ruins in peace. That said, while you ruffle around the rubble, you may notice that on the stage of the building's auditorium is a microphone that can actually be interacted with. If you do so, regardless of your character's gender, you'll simply say, War, war never changes. War. War never changes. While that quote is pretty much the unofficial slogan of the Fallout franchise, it does seem a bit odd that, for whatever reason, at this singular spot, Bethesda decided to make the player say it, without any additional context. Well, it does seem a bit odd, until you do some digging. This location is likely of some very special significance to our character. You see, at the very start of the game, just after Nate gives his whole cinematic monologue and the camera cuts to him and his wife at the character creation menu, these are the words we'll hear. War never changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the Veterans Hall tonight, hun. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. The protagonists were going to an event for veterans the day the bombs fell. And believe it or not, we know almost for a fact that that event was going to be located at Fraternal Post 115. As in one of the building's terminals, we can find an entry that explicitly states the organization running this building was trying to get Nate to give a speech in their facility as a way to bring in funding. Well, a cool little fact in its own right, the discovery of this information has led much of the community to theorize that that whole cinematic monologue the game opens with, as Nate vaguely speaks of the horrors of war, is actually him rehearsing the speech he was supposed to give at the Veterans Hall. This makes sense, as he was looking into a mirror, and his monologue ends with the phrase, War never changes. So it makes sense that he'd be reminded of it whenever he was back in the building. Or maybe we're all just nuts. No matter, at least now we all know there's a random microphone we can briefly use. Now, before we get to our final spot in today's video, there is one honorable mention that I'd like to share. And the reason this one's an honorable mention is because I suspect a considerable portion of the audience watching this video may already be familiar with it, as it seems like something people would know if they use companions often. However, I don't, and I only learned about it today as I was researching this video. Anyway, if you have an active follower and attempt to give them an order while in the sneaking mode, your character will actually whisper the instructions rather than shout them, as to keep quiet and keep enemies from hearing you. Psst. Over there. Get into position. I was incredibly impressed when I found this out. But again, I rarely use companions, and would imagine people that do so more frequently are probably already aware of this. But hopefully there's a few people out there that just had their minds blown too. And finally, last on our list, 
Volt 81 is one of the last remaining, still fully operational volts left in America. Seemingly not subjected to a horrible experiment like many of the others, Volt 81's occupants enjoy a pretty decent life, protected from the dangers of the outside world, and well fed. Unfortunately for us, the people inside of Volt 81 are a bit skittish of outsiders, i.e. they don't want to let anyone inside whom they don't really trust. And, I mean, well, considering some of the people we meet in the Commonwealth, can you really blame them? The Vault Dwellers can be convinced to open up and let us inside, either after we pass a red speech check, or bring them three fusion cores. Upon setting foot in Vault 81 for the first time, we'll be greeted by the Overseer, who will welcome us into her community and lay down a few brief ground rules, before allowing us to effectively run free. Well, if you decide to put on a Volt 111 jumpsuit for your first meeting with the Overseer, she'll notice it, and it'll result in a whole new dialogue tree being opened up, where she'll ask about where you got it from, and you can explain the horrors that your Volt went through. Gwen McNamara, Overseer. Welcome to Vault 81. I admit, I didn't expect to see you wearing a Vault suit. Did you come from one of the Vaults? Is it still operational? more like a graveyard now. Almost no survivors. Christ, I'm sorry. What happened there? They had us cryogenically frozen in these pods, but something malfunctioned. Oh my god. All those lives lost due to some malfunction? That's unacceptable. I suppose we've been lucky. Here, we pride ourselves on having maintained a successful vault over these past two centuries. Unfortunately, she doesn't give us any cool toys like Ericsson does, but still, dialogue's nice too, I guess. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Five things you probably didn't know you could do in Fallout 4 Part 4. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these facts or details did you already know or find to be the most interesting? And what hidden lines of dialogue, special quest endings, or hidden interactions do you know of that I've yet to cover? leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.